Actually, we are truly human brothers and sisters. And according to many theistic religions, we all created by one God. That God, infinite love, something like our Father. So we all created by one single God, Father. So we truly, from that viewpoint, truly we are brothers, sisters. Then, according to non-theistic religious viewpoint, no single creator or God. We individual ourselves. This is whether you call Atma or soul, no beginning. Life after life. Uh, then this period we born on this same planet. So truly, we are brothers, sisters. Then most important, if we keep here sense of brotherhood, sisterhood, entire seven billion human beings are same, then world uh, can be peaceful, compassionate, Otherwise, now, today's world, besides global warming, these are beyond our control. But many other problems, actually our own creation, with too much emphasis on we and they, and ultimately self-centered attitude. Then, same human being killing each other, exploiting each other, bully each other. Very sad. According to scientists, our basic human nature, since we are a social animal, so basic human nature is more compassionate. There's now scientists, some scientists say that. And then also the constant anger, hatred, actually eating our immune system. So, not talking about religion, but 
according to scientific finding. Om heartiness here. It's very good for our health also. So basic nature, human being, as I mentioned earlier, more compassionate. So truly, we are brothers. The sense of brotherhood, sisterhood, then that sort of compassion become more active. That's very important. Then human nature, like that, uh, om heartedness. Since our birth, om heartedness there, a sense of sort of uh, may not use the word, but actually a sense of some kind of brotherhood, sisterhood there. Then. When we join school, no existing school system, not much pay attention about our uh, emotion. The existing, I usually call modern education. That's. You see, mainly come from West. So in the Western tradition, just God pray, pray. Then, whereas this country, India, over three thousand years, concept of ahimsa, already there, and karuna, there, and also shamatha. Single-pointed pointed meditation, then vipassana, analytical meditation, over three thousand years. And then, Jain uh, master, and then Buddha. These great thinker. Uh, Real spiritual leader, these are product of thousand-year-old India's tradition, tradition, which was which very much, very much emphasis ahimsa, corona. So, so now today, we really need some education. About our emotion, about our mind. Otherwise, basic nature, these positive things there, are, but our brain, you see, they mainly thinking material value. So, in education, uh, should include about. Our mind, emotion, and how to tackle these things, so that basic human nature, om hartness here, brain education, also you see they uh, make clear om hartness is the source of happiness, inner strength, and ultimately. Warm heartedness is a source of or basis of world peace. So, education now in this country, India, uh, you have the as I mentioned earlier, over thousand years the concept of ahimsa, karuna, disadya. Now this should. Uh, part of education. So, so called so called modern education is oriented about material value. So, people who come that kind of education, uh, it eventually create materialistic life. 
materialistic culture. When such people facing some problem, emotional problem, they, they do not know how to tackle. So these days, I am sort of telling, expressing, the, from kindergarten level, uh, while we teach children, kindergarten level, hygiene of physical, we should include hygiene of emotion. Must go together from kindergarten level up to university level. Then, that means utilize this intelligence, human brain, to full sort of support about basic human nature of warm-heartedness. So, now in this respect, uh, India, I think, have the ability to combine ancient Indian knowledge about mind, about chit, and modern education combine these two things. Only in this country, no other country. So, uh, these days, I telling people, see, my latest uh, commitment or responsible or commitment is revival of ancient Indian knowledge about our emotion, about our mind, and then combine modern education and ancient these things combine. Firstly, now in this country, you see these knowledge simply revival, not something new, no. Already three thousand years already there. So the question is revival. And modern education must neglected these things. So should revive in this country. Then you can uh, show world, like previous century, Mahatma Gandhiji show to the world ahimsa, non-violence. So many people uh, all over the world truly is attracted towards Mahatma Gandhiji's non-violent sort of uh, non-violent sort of the concept or practice. So. Now, I think in this century, uh, India, India can make significant contribution regarding inner peace. Not as a religious sort of practice, no. Religion is something different. These are moral, spiritual or moral principles. And this country already a secular ethics, so secular, uh, not involved religious faith. Religion, religious faith is individual business. But these are the, also the related with humanity. So we, part of seven billion human beings, we have moral responsibility to think how to build this seven billion human being more peaceful, more happy humanity. Uh, happiness not through money or dollar. No, happiness, uh, ultimate source is within ourselves. Now this we should include in our education field. So, so that uh, I always now expressing uh, these things. So now here, I want to take some questions and our sort of also the uh, meeting should take like class, right? Take questions or oh, questions and, and some, some sort of what's today, 
advice or views, suggestions, most welcome. And also critical sort of uh, comment, most welcome. <laughs> it is very important to see all aspects, uh, just to repeat positive thing, positive thing, then no, 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 because of the no, no more progress. Hmm? So critical view is very important, particularly Nalinda tradition. We are student of Nalinda tradition. We use extensively logical approach. In that, the critical view very important. Then critical views bring us new thought. Why? 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 How? How? Oh. So person who study Buddhist logic, Nalanda logic, you see, we never say yes, yes, yes. Uh, new ideas or a new sort of, even Buddha's own teaching come. We immediately, our response is why Buddha say that? So that brings third, sort of, sort of further investigation. The Nalanda tradition, uh, I think one remarkable thing is, even Buddha's own word, the master, Nalanda, many Nalanda master investigate certain Buddha's quotation. When they find uh, sort of uh, contradiction, then they reject. This is Buddha's word. But Buddha taught uh, to different purpose. We cannot accept it literally. That's, I think, a great thing. So therefore, a critical uh, of the comment. Very useful. Very useful. And then perhaps uh, uh, I'm student of Nalanda tradition. Since six, seven year old, I train and we Tibetan tradition. We use extensively logical approach, debate. So, uh, so among the audience, you see, raise some critical comment. It's very helpful. Then, uh, gives me opportunity to show how my sharpness of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now some questions or comment. Yes, now some questions or comment. Professor Ashish, Welcome. question from either this side of the hall or that side of the hall. There's a mic there. I think one mail home, I think put here. put here. Then, yes, then all those people who have some question, please come here. Uh, my name is Ashish Chandra. I'm a professor of healthcare administration at the University of Houston, Clear Lake in Houston, Texas. Sound not very good. Hmm. Better? It's better. Okay. My name is Ashish Chandra. I'm a professor of healthcare administration at the University of Houston, Clear Lake in Houston, Texas. And first, I'm truly honored to be here in your presence. I did not know I had these emotions inside me till you gave your speech, so I'm truly honored with that. But I teach two courses. I teach healthcare marketing and I teach healthcare ethics. Many have said that's kind of oxymoron, that how can you teach healthcare marketing and healthcare ethics at the same time? What is your belief about healthcare itself? Is it a privilege or is it a right? Karsa. Health. 
फर्ज क्या है ओम मार्केट आई डोंट नो सेकंड I think briefly I already mentioned basically I already mentioned the peace of mind is most important part of physical health because you know in a peace brings calm the situation surrounding situation doesn't matter even if it's a very difficult one and including a lot of criticism towards yourself uh, if you are you have warm heartedness here you can keep calmness one shantan deva i mean shantan deva was teaching 8th century a great indian philosopher master now uh, he mentioned uh enemy is your best teacher oh so such sort of way of thinking then according my own little experience i try to practice buddhicitta altruism infinite altruism every day so as a result whole universe appears positive if too much self centered sort of thinking then everywhere suspicion and mm kasari mean ka of fears so the fears or sort of suspicion all ultimately related with self centered attitude that open and think entire sentient being and uh, in practical level 7 billion human being on this planet truly consider brotherhood sisterhood then the city fear automatically disappear so calm mind also very important for physical health okay thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you good morning sir hmm uh, i am levlin a student from bcom uh, my question is oh oh, oh i said yeah <laughs> yeah yes Did during the course of your life what have been the greatest personal experiences or internal challenges karsa karsha karsha hmm firstly study uh, analyze the the difficulties or oh, if that difficulties or oh, can overcome i mean thara investigation the reality uh if the problem can overcome then no need to worry <coughs> if there sort of situation like old age or finally death say analyze no way to overcome then no use too much worry okay so important is analyze any difficulties uh usually our sort of the brain use uh, on the basis of just one dimension that's i think mistake since we have this marvelous brain not uh, not like animal brain animal brain we have this marvelous brain so we have the ability to look any problem 
from various different angles. Then also think these present difficulties, what kind of consequences in future. For example, we Tibetan, we lost our own freedom, our own country. Difficult. But that also, you see, brought uh, some new opportunity and gained more experience. So suffering, one way, very bad. One way, it may create different sort of what's day, opportunity or uh, of the strengthening our mind. Okay. So it is very important when, when you face some problem, then not just looking one aspect, then more frustration. If you look from various angles, then that particular problem may have sort of what's day, some potential to create some new opportunity or new inner strength like that. Okay, next question. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good morning, uh, His Holiness. Thank you so much for this inspiring uh, thought you shared with us. Uh, my question is uh, regarding peace, what we are looking at. So in the time of hatred, conflict, and division of the world, what is your message to world leaders and to Indian politicians? Thank you so much. Krasa. That's difficult. <laughs> oh. The reason, existing education, as I mentioned earlier, you see, so-called modern education, which come from West, only oriented about the material value. There is no education about our inner emotions. So I think many problems, including many leaders, is they come from that kind of education. They do not know when they are facing some emotional problem. They do not know. So. Now, uh, it is not, sorry, not much use to complain this, this person, that person, that person. The whole education system is something uh, not complete, just about a material thing. So here, I think India's ancient education, I feel the great potential from childhood, as I mentioned earlier, very young child, the very nature of human, sort of say, the human quality, uh, sense of brotherhood, sisterhood, and warm heartedness. Now, education should further sort of uh, uh, supporting these basic values. Then, if we start some new effort with vision, vision, then later part of this 21st century can be, I think, generation who come through such kind of education, more complete education, physical, mind, emotion complete. Then, I think after 30 years, something I think a different generation come. Then th through that way, genuine, peaceful world can possible. The existing situation remain there, I mean, continue, and then problem, endless problem come. Okay. Good morning, Your Highness. I'm Sheetal of BCom, semester fifth. Uh, Your Highness, I would like to ask you, while one of your speech about happiness, you mentioned that peace of mind brings good sleep. But sir, while closing our eyes, when uh, we just feel is fear, how do you think we attain that peace of mind? Karsa. Uh, 
I did uh, fear survey, fear. I think many fear just exaggeration, your own mental level. If mad dog come, then with fear, you see, either you run away or do something. <laughs> many problems actually our own sort of mental creation, fear. So that, ultimately, too much self-centered attitude here, uh, then your whole mind become more narrow. Then some suspicion, look this side, some suspicion, this side, some suspicion. For that, altruism truly, you see, bring, uh, firstly, truly self-confidence. Now here I want to share uh, something that's really, truly encouraging. That is all the negative emotion, very much related with ignorance. Uh, then the positive, now, for, now I think according to quantum physics, some, you see, quantum physicists, some, you see, realize when you, uh, some kind of sort of, not only knowledge, conviction, nothing exists objectively. Nothing exists as appears. The reality is something different than appearances. Uh, so, such sort of, as a physicist, they begin to realize once things, some good thing or sort of a negative thing, uh, you uh, do not sort of convince uh, it is existence as appears from I mean, absolute, from objective. That no longer there. Then grasping, good, too much, too much good, grasping. Extreme good, extreme bad. So that uh, things does not exist as appears. Ultimately, very much depend on observer. Now this is quantum physics now. The Nagarjuna psychology also exactly same that. Exactly, so to say, same, same, same view. One of my Indian friend, perhaps some of you may know Raja Ramana. Yeah. Late Raja Ramana, once he mentioned to me, quantum physics in the West, something new. In this country, 2,000 years ago, already developed quantum physics. He told me. It is true. At that time, you see, he also uh, recite few sentences of Nagarjuna, Madhimika Mulakarika. So this is make distinction. The emotion very much based on grasping something absolute, because absolute exists. So in that, when you realize things does not exist as appears, when we investigate nothing there as appears, so big gap, appearances and reality. So most of the destructive emotion based on appearances. So there is no proper uh, foundation. The positive emotion, such as compassion, uh, karuna, the sufficient reason. So that's, I think, the one, once we uh, think more uh, and know that, then we develop uh, some kind of confidence or oh, my destructive emotion, negative emotion can reduce because there is no proper basis. Uh, 
the positive emotion with sufficient reason. So that increase, the, such as compassion increase, anger automatically reduces. So nowadays, not just religious sort of thing, but I think a subject for uh, academic, for how to build healthy mind, peaceful mind. Okay. We are not talking, we are not talking or oh, nirvana or oh, next life or oh, heaven. We simply, you see, talking how to, how to train uh, our mind, peaceful mind, day to day's life. <coughs> your Holiness, we are all truly honored to be in your uh, presence. Thank you so much for addressing us. Uh, I'm Nazuk Kumar. I'm uh, posted as SDM in Chandigarh. Sir, uh, I, I, uh, as you rightly said, uh, the, there is a need for a spiritual base in our modern education. And, uh, but my question is that uh, in government schools, the children that we interact with, a lot of them come from very economically weaker uh, backgrounds. So how do I ground uh, spirituality uh, for a child who, uh, does not, who does not know whether he'll be getting food in the next meal, or who has to go back to a small, small slum uh, settlement where he's not able to sleep properly or maybe not go to the toilet properly. So how do I tell him about spiritual education? Karsa. Now they uh, on this planet, there's huge gap rich and poor, and within different country, big differences, poor and Kasa, rich and poor. And this country, I think the thousand year old concept of uh, caste system. I think that outdated. Even Buddha's time, Buddha totally against the make distinction on the basis of caste. So now, uh, in modern India, you see, caste system as a tradition still sort of keep. I think that through education. Uh, we can change that. And in this case, the relig religious leaders, spiritual leaders, I think, should come out to say caste system is outdated. And caste system is very much related with feudal system. Feudal system gone. I think the uh, in feudal system, kings or those rulers, you see, in order to how say, they justify their role on poor people, they create caste system. I think that out of date. So therefore, now through education, I think these should Kasota should change. And then I think government level, concerned people, you see, should pay more attention about how say, the uh, poor people. In this respect, as far as socio-economy theory is concerned, I am Marxist. <laughs> Karl Marx, you see, when industrialization in the West, too much exploitation, working class people. So Karl Marx stand right for uh, working class people. And then he also, you see, mentioned, expressed equal distribution. So in this respect, uh, I am Marxist. Uh, I, think very, I think wonderful Marxist theory, I think spoiled by 
Lenin. <laughs> the, at the time of Lenin come, Good Bolshevik point. Revolution, uh, you know, the ci civil war and some other sort of, uh, sort of uh, sort of causes. So his thinking is more militant, so totalitarian power and ruthless suppression. So he spoiled Karl Marx's wonderful theory. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Our Highness. Uh, we all very proud and feel glad to see you in front of us. And my question is, uh, how has the roles for you set out of changes when you first when you first came to be the Dalai Lama? Kansa, what? what? What question? How has the role set out for you changed since you first came to be the Dalai Lama? Kansa, including myself, thousands Tibetan uh, Buddhist st student, mainly in monastic institution. You see, from childhood, they learn, I mean, we learn the logical approach. We extensively use logic. Uh, and then psychology, all these Sometimes I sort of express the Western psychology, compare ancient Indian psychology, then the Western psychology looks like kindergarten level. <laughs> Indian psychology highly developed. So uh, subject in our study, psychology also there. And then philosophy. When I met some quantum physicists. Uh, of course, I respect them. I admire them. But in deep, on one side of my mind, uh, quantum, as far as quantum physics is concerned, I know better. <laughs> so this, our sort of, because of subject, our study, in Tibet, according to Nalinda tradition, in order to become a fairly good scholar, at least a 20, 30 years study. And all these texts are wrote by Nalinda masters. So I think since 8th century, the Tibetan emperor, Tibetan king, invited, the, at that time, the top most sort of Azoda scholar. Shandar Rakshita, great logician, great philosopher. So his writing we still study. So he, since he introduced the Nalinda tradition, so we extensively use our logic, logical approach. So therefore, uh, myself since childhood study these things. There is no or should they, because of the special arrangement for Dalai Lama's sort of study. No, ordinary. Uh, so, uh, when I study these things, I not much interest, so very much reluctant. So, my tutor kept on weak. The color of the whip is yellow. Suppose the, student, the person supposed to kasoda, kasoda. Ka. Uh, the person uh, to, to, to use that uh, the whip, suppose holy. So the whip also should be holy. So yellow or uh, yellow uh, whip. So I, young person, already know if we wholly uh, weep use, 
no differences of, differences of holy pain. <laughs> so, so, so out, of, out of fear, you see, we, like myself, you see, pay more attention. Then thousands of students that way. So I think as far as uh, Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist logic is concerned, I think we Tibetan, since uh, the 8th century, we really pay much attention for study till our generation. Now here, even we become refugee. Some of our bigger uh, settlement, the big monastic institution, uh, re-establish. Now at least in South India, uh, around 10,000 monk student, and also none, few thousand none. Uh, they also study same way, so become scholar. Uh, so now I think uh, in, uh, at at the moment I think um, the only knowledge tradition available among Tibetan refugee community. So when the few Tibetan girl you see perform something, I very much moved. We Tibetan. Uh, before Buddhism came, we are just a warrior, uh, like that. So sometimes I teaching, teasing, <laughs> I teasing is the Indian. If Tibetan ancient sort of, I said a habit, warrior or sword, spear, whenever we face some sort of, uh, sort of uh, some opposition, we just crash. So since Buddhism came to Tibet, we become peaceful, non-violent. So Chinese take advantage. <laughs> <laughs> so in any way, uh, so I, I really feel, uh, I openly, you see, telling my Indian friend, and thousand year old, thousand years ago, you Indian, our teacher, our guru, we are chela. Chela. Huh? We are not only just chela, reliable chela. <laughs> hmm? The guru's own land, too much ups and downs. We chela kept all this knowledge over a thousand years. So now, unfortunate or fortunate, chela become guru. Guru become chela. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, Your Holiness. Um, I'm Catherine. I come from Canada. I absolutely love your message that you opened with about uh, everyone being one big human family, hmm? brothers and sisters. Um, I, uh, I, I also think that this is a very basic tenet of so many faiths, and um, yet in our world we see the rises of uh, protectionism, nationalism, division along the lines of faith, and I just wondered what your thoughts are on how to maintain our beautiful diversity and yet um, create a unity within that diversity to get back to our true human family. She wants unity in diversity. Hmm? Through education, uh, I think I always be telling people, expressing that we need oneness of seven sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. That's important. As I mentioned earlier, according to scientists, because we are social animal, basic human nature is more compassionate. Social animal, emotionally, you see something to bring together. That's love. 
loving kindness. Oh, anger, competition, expel. So, since we are social animal, then the, in ancient time, the you see the sense of sort of community, very small scale, small scale somewhere. Huh? Now gradually nation, and now for example India, the South Indian, uh, West Indian, North Indian, East Indian, Central Indian, different language, different script, but all remain together in the union. So that also you see some kind of the spirit of, of oneness of entire Indian. Now this now should promote through education entire seven billion human beings are same human uh, as the uh, same sort of as the, uh, member of human family, human community. Now today uh, the community, in the sense, East depend on Europe, or West, West depend on East, their future. So similarly, South and North. So actually, entire world like one community. So therefore, now we need sense of community, entire seven billion human beings are one community. So on that basis, we can teach people oneness of seven billion human beings. And then uh, national demarcation is a secondary level. Religious differences, secondary level. Basically, we are same human being. We have to live together on this planet. This is some scholar some scientists say moons and Mars like that, but there's no way, no possibility go there and settle and happily, no. You see, no matter how many sort of complicated, this is the only our home. We must sort of live together. And also, you see, we have to take serious pay attention about the environment. Now, global warming, no, very serious. So according to my own experience, in 1960, I came to Dharmasala. Uh, over uh, nearly now 60 years, or 60 years, the first 1960 winter, a lot of snow. Then each year, less, 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 less. So we experienced the global warming. In Tibet also now, you see, a uh, lot of snow each year, each decade reduce. So now, global warming is something very serious. I really appreciate the Swedish girl, Marbe, Swedish girl. Oh, she really sort of, also they make effort to make awareness about the environment. Wonderful, like that. So I think more and more people, uh, you see, now coming, realize the importance or seriousness, seriousness about global warming. One of my recently, one our meeting, some environmentalist sort of specialist, uh, including one Chinese from Taiwan. Uh, so he expressed the within next uh, seven, uh, eight decades of global warming may become very serious. When he explained that, as far as myself, no worry. <laughs> I already uh, eight over eighty years. So next. Uh, because of the uh, uh, 67 days, I have no worry. But those people who have children and grandchildren, you have to pay more attention about their future. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so the global warming, that is a very, very serious matter. Very serious matter. Yes. Good morning, Guruji. I am Rakshita and I am from Dharamshala. And having you in front of me is like a dream come true. We are blessed and honored to have you around. My question is, how can we stay faithful and optimistic since there is so much hate in the world? Karsa, hated you. Oh. As I already mentioned, basic human nature, now according to scientists, not, not religious sort of belief, according to scientists, as I already mentioned, basic human nature is more compassionate. We are social animals. So, uh, there is a real sort of hope, I mean, basis of hope, you see, through training, through education, you see, we can uh, develop warm-heartedness. Uh, so, so, basically, if we make attempt, effort, tirelessly, with conviction, then I'm optimistic. In this respect, I think India, I think, um, should lead. Uh, I think at least show the world how to develop mental peace through mental training. That's India's sort of responsibility. Then more and more people follow. I. Often you see, feel, and also you see, express uh, next, uh, what's it, uh, our neighbor, Afghanistan. So Indian Muslim should take more sort of effort to bring peace there. And Arab world, Shia and Sunni. In this country, religious harmony is marvelous. So, uh, among Muslims, I never heard problem Shia and Sunni in this country. But our neighbor, you see, Shia and Sunni, you see, killing each other. So, the Indian Muslim should be more active. So, we can make certain contribution of religious harmony. When I heard, you see, Afghanistan, these problem, uh, you see, whenever you see, I uh, fly or return from Europe to India over Afghanistan, then desert land. There are many signs of uh, previously lack, now dry, drying, or some small lake. So when I saw these things, then the Afghanistan people uh, should plant more trees uh, rather than killing each other. So uh, in that respect, I think the Indian Muslim, as a Muslim brother, sisters, you see, should do something, you see, to reduce the fighting between Shia and Sunni in this Muslim world. In this country, I think wonderful religious harmony, really wonderful. I think all major religious traditions live together here. Occasionally, a uh, small, small problem that perhaps mainly due to politician. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, India still has the spirit of religious harmony. Now, this now not enough to keep ourselves. No, show world the religious harmony is possible. Uh, is important. Okay. Namaste, Your Holiness. Kachosa. 
Namaste, Your Holiness. Thank you. We're truly blessed to have you here with us, and I'm blessed to be amongst such welcoming people as we have here today. I'd like to suggest that there is optimism as well, and a lot of this rests in the young people that we have. My name isn't important. What I suppose may be salient is I come from the great Southland, Australia, and I've had 47 years of teaching. And I say with my teaching, I have always worked with ethics in education. I am in a business school, and some may view that as a pit of vipers. However, we have opportunity to present the right way, the moral way, the way that is fair and that shares. And businesses are beginning to see this. And many of them are working towards new corporate forms, such as cooperatives, where people put things together and they purchase things and they carry out the exchange of goods and services in a cooperative way. This goes back to the 1860s, 70s in the United Kingdom, to my awareness, but I am sure that it has occurred in the past. So if I might throw out a wisp of hope and say that it is already progressing with people who are in education, who are attempting to work with morals, attempting to work with ethics, uh, and I think the optimism from the young people that we have here. It's not so much a question, Your Holiness, it's just please give us your blessing for optimism. Thank you. Now, when, when I look at uh, 20th century and early part of 20th century, First World War, Second World War, after Second World War, I think people, European people, getting more mature. So under the leadership of German Ardenna and the French de Gaulle, European Union developed. I think early part of 20th century, such sort of union impossible. Now, through difficult experience, people becoming more mature. So I really admire the spirit of European Union. So uh, I often use expressing that kind of spirit, European Union now should uh, uh, develop in Northern Africa and Latin America and eventually whole Africa. Otherwise, you see, small, small nation and spend a lot of money for weapon and killing. The Union, I think because of European Union, at least the last few decades, no longer any killing among member states. Wonderful. Now that gradually, you see, we can develop whole world one union without any weapon. Uh, I think mm, it is much better as a weapon or disagreement with a sort of gun. No, not that. Disagreement on brain. Debate, debate, debate. It's a good. You see, uh, so eventually this world, one of my dream is uh, now, eventually, this century should be uh, in order to create a century of peace. Uh, number one, demilitarized world. That's, I think, uh, then we can save a lot of money. That money spent those poorer section of people. And education, I feel. I think these are possible. Comparatively, human being becoming more mature. Uh, I really admire the New Zealander, you see, the Maori people. Hmm? 
So they equally sort of, what's it there? Kasoda. Uh, complete equal with white people there, isn't it? In Australia, <laughs> some of the need, they kasa. Or, or, or some difficulties. So, you know, Maori people, they have that sort of tradition when meet people, touch nose. So, uh, when I touch uh, people who have big nose, then no problem. <laughs> but you see, some, some people, like I like, like my, <laughs> your my, nose. <laughs> oh, then you say supposed to touch your nose, but it may touch here. <laughs> Good morning, Your Holiness. I am Shaolin Segal from MBA branch. Your Holiness. You are a Nobel Laureate for Peace. The world recognized you as an apostle of peace. But the same world itself not seems to be at peace. Why? Kasa. I think I feel the education system not adequate to bring inner peace. So world peace through inner peace. Fear to my self-centered attitude and to my sort of sort of concern our benefit. And in order to that destroy their their sort of because uh, of the well being or something like that. So I think through education, eventually, I think can can change. I feel basically, as I already mentioned, basic human nature is positive, and then now education, more sort of emphasis about this inner value, then and then we should we must teach the differences of religion, differences of nationality. These are secondary. We are same human being. We have to live together on this planet. Then I think things things can change. Thank you. Yes, I am Sukra Adhikari from birthplace of Buddha, Nepal, Trivun University. Uh, I highly honor to these kinds of friends to you, first of all. And I sell it to this holy place, Punjab, Chandigarh, which is the original land of oldest literature, Veda, which provided the cosmic knowledge of the human civilization since thousands of years ago in the world. Yes, I, have, I, I sell it this land, yes. And uh, one of the, my query, uh, holy, uh, His Holiness, Dalai Lama, all is suffering by religious conflict. Why we cannot link the Buddhist philosophy for novel truth to reduce the global conflict in contemporary society to manage the, to establish the social harmony in the world? Yes, thank you very much. Katsa. So my effort, without touching religion, religion is private business. Uh, on the basis of a sense of oneness of human, humanity, uh, we can develop the secular ethics, not touching religion. Religion, private business. Certainly, we can take uh, uh, some sort of uh, 
uh, lessons from, uh, I think, religious text, uh, particularly Buddhist text, a lot of explanation about psychology and uh, the philosophy, different philosophy. This, I think, Buddhism, Buddhist philosophy is quite rich because of Nalanda institution. Is something learning center. So many scholar come from that is intellectually because of that. Because really uh, scholar. So uh, meantime also they study Buddhist philosophy, Buddhist logic, these things. Uh, but so there are a lot of resources. But we should take these. Uh, academic subject, not religious subject. And then India's tradition, secular, without touching religion. Religion, private business. The moral principle, moral, these things are re relevant with humanity. So I think we can, uh, through again, as I mentioned earlier, through education, we should take some of these things as an academic subject, how to build peace of mind, and through that way, peaceful society, ultimately peaceful world. Not through religion. Religion then, firstly, Buddhists do not believe God, no creator. So, you know, the Bishop Tutu, my great spiritual brother, a wonderful, really wonderful. The, we always used to teasing each other. Whenever we meet, you see, he described me as a mischievous Dalai Lama. <laughs> so I, I call him a mischievous bishop. <laughs> so. A lot of sort of city, uh, I mean, talk or conversation. One occasion, I think in Canada, a public talk, uh, he very much praised me. Then at the end, he mentioned, unfortunately, <laughs> this person is not Christian. <laughs> so that. Uh, I think a few years ago, uh, he come down Salah, in spite of his sort of old age. And then about three days, we discuss uh, about, you see, I think one book also now already published. So uh, during that discussion, see, he teasing me, he as a Christian, believe God. So he ready, go to heaven. Then uh, Dalai Lama may go different place. That means hell. <laughs> we, as a Buddhist, don't believe God, so, so he mentioned that, <laughs> like that. So, so strictly speaking, uh, Buddhist, oh, not so or so they. Uh, I mean, religion, strictly speaking, uh, creator, then Buddhism, Buddhist, and the Jainist, Jainism, no God. And also one part of Sangya philosophy, over 3,000 years, ancient, earliest Indian tradition, Sangya. There are two. One Sangya group believe God, creator. One Sangya, no creator. Then Jain, Jainism also followed that, and then Buddhism also followed that. So we have the last two questions now. Right, that's right. So in the philosophical field, there is big differences in these different traditions, particularly Buddhism. Uh, but that's just a method. The real aim is try to develop karuna. Karuna. 
uh, all Indian majority tradition, including Buddhism or Jainism, you see, in spite of different philosophical views, we all practice Ahimsa and Karuna. So all religion, main purpose is Karuna. So very good, no problem. I never state Buddhism is best. So like a medicine, we can't say one pick up one medicine, this is best medicine, you can't say. Uh, judging the individual patient. So some patient, this medicine is best. To some patient, this medicine is best. Similarly, to some people, the godly religion, believe God, is best, most effective. To some people, like Buddhism anyway, godless religion, and Jainism also. So some people, their religion is, you see, more suitable. But these are just a method, all carry message of love, message of karuna, compassion. So wonderful. So all major religious tradition, same purpose, but different philosophy. Uh, Your Holiness, I have a really short question. Um, how do you maintain the patience when you don't see the change in the world that you so much desire? Yeah, right. <laughs> Vision, what is that? Got it. How? Huh. Here now, I think patience, the basic uh, aim is realistic, possible to achieve. That does not mean uh, no obstacle, but obstacle there. But the basic aim is something very necessary. Then we have to keep our determination, no matter how difficult it is, then can uh, eventually. I think here, uh, the Buddhist or say terminology, uh, term we can say, true truth, ultimate truth, uh, conventional truth. So something like that, the sort of happy world, is something absolute truth. Everybody want that. Seven billion human beings want happy life. I usually say, very purpose of our life is joyfulness, happiness. Because you see, our life depends on hope, no guarantee. So hope means something good. So once people lost hope, and then that very mental attitude shortened our life, and worst case, suicide. So therefore, we can say, the very purpose of our life is happiness, joyfulness. So therefore, uh, that's our principle, principle. Happy world, seven billion human beings, wants happiness. So. We all have the right to achieve happy world. Then mystic is our intelligence, this brain, marvelous brain, not properly used. Too much emotion. So that through education we can change. I feel that. <laughs> Hi, Your Holiness. It is such a privilege to be here in this audience today. My name is Shara Ali, and I am from Toronto, Canada, where I lecture at the University of Toronto. I'm a nursing executive in Toronto, and I'm one of four fellows from Western University of Health Sciences in Pomona, California. And I've spent my last decade of my career in the mental health sector. And with youth and young adults, 
I have to credit them for the voice that they use to advocate for change for large items such as global uh, climate change and diversity and inclusion. But in the Western world, if we can separate the two, they are simultaneously challenged by the integration of technology and reality TV stars. And um, as a result, we are seeing higher incidences of these younger folks experiencing depression, uh, poor coping skills, anxiety, trauma. And as a healthcare provider, my question to you is, and beyond a healthcare provider, as a parent, as a sister, as a family member, a friend, how do we, in the Western culture, really face the challenges associated with reality stars such as the Kardashians having more impact than education. And this is a constant reality that we're seeing, and I'm wondering how do we cure this potential ac epidemic of loneliness, trauma, depression, and so on. Huh? It is true, as I already mentioned, the, through certain uh, way of education, you see, creates materialistic culture, materialistic life. And materialistic life is mainly, you see, uh, relying our joyfulness on sensorial experiences. So, uh, drama, play, or these become something very important. Then music and taste and also sexual. Because we only know the sensory level uh, consciousness. Never pay much attention about sixth mind. So real happiness, joyfulness must develop on sixth mind not five sensory level. So in order to, uh, as I also say, to pay more attention, you should need more knowledge about the whole system of mind and mm, emotion. These, as I mentioned earlier, ancient Indian tradition about psychology, about mind, very useful, very useful. The anger, uh, hatred, and kindness, or loving kindness, these things uh, combined with sixth mind, not sensorial. So unless you touch sixth mind, the sensorial level, it, the sort of happy experience won't much effect on our negative emotion. Okay. Hmm? Thank you so much, Your Holiness, for your message of universal brotherhood and love that would help each one of us today to leave this room a little in enlightened and strive to be a better human replete with compassion. It's indeed a moment of honor for all of us here to honor His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama on the 14th of October, what a date, with an honorary doctorate. So could we have the citation, please? Honorary Doctorate for Unparalleled and Invaluable Contribution to Humanity and World Peace and Education. And in recognition of his outstanding achievements in promoting peace globally and for inspirational spiritual guidance and leadership.
I'm sure it's an overwhelming moment for all of us here. May I now request Your Holiness to kindly declare the 11th Global Week of Chitkara University open. I see. Oh, I, <clears throat> I hereby declare the 11th Global Week of Chitakara University open. Thank you, Your Holiness. I'm sure we all agree that the Global Week is blessed today. Thank you so much. I would now request our worthy Vice Chancellor, Dr. Madhu Chitkara, to please express her gratitude to His Holiness. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I think I don't have words to say anything now after this, but it is my responsibility. So most respected His Holiness, Dalai Lama Ji, Ms. Mia Yen, Consulate General of Canada in Chandigarh, Mr. Rahul Kumar, DC of Patiala, Mr. Anil Kumar, IS, Ms. Nazuk Kumar, our international guests, government officials from the state of Punjab and UT Chandigarh, Dr. Ashok Chitkara, Chancellor Chitkara University, members of press, all my faculty members, and my dear students. As well said by uh, His Holiness also, Mahatma Gandhi said, happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. Ethics, happiness, and peace are so intricately related, and today's address of His Holiness truly resounded the same. As well said by him, whatever I was able to gather, that we all talk about emotional intelligence. We talk about intelligence, uh, emotional intelligence. So it is a need of the hour to go for emotional intelligence. Moral education should revive again. In our times, there was a period of it. So now I think there is a great uh, message given by His Holiness that we should revive those values. And Mahatma Gandhi Ji's non-violence, which is very important, which was, I think, the gist of his speech, and the secular ethics, more happy humanity. That is why what we are doing today is that we are opening up our center for happiness. And the enemy, the best line which I like the most is, the enemy is the best teacher. And I think I must appreciate that whatever we learn, we learn less from the friends, but more from the enemies. And the best and not the, I think, last but not the least, which I gathered is that problems gives opportunities. So that is, I think that was the best thing which we I have gathered. So I strongly believe that all dots in the world are connected and each one is affected and influenced by the other. Well said by His Holiness. Peace and happiness are the two most important ingredients 
of a delightful life. His Holiness pointed out that ethical living and purity at heart are the two binding factors of peace and happiness. So I am truly indebted to you, Sir, His Holiness, for making it possible to come here and bless our university with your holy footsteps. We are most humbled with your blessings, kind words, and peace message. My heartful thanks for Miss Mia Yen, Council General of Canada in Chandigarh, for sparing her valuable time on a very short notice and oblige us with his presence, with her presence. Sorry. We thankfully acknowledge the presence of Mr. Anil Kumar, IS, Mr. Rahul Kumar, DC, Ms. Nazu Kumar, SDM, and their family for their graceful presence. Our international guests who are true ambassadors of knowledge and are our partners in making our university a global village. I am thankful for your presence and acknowledge that you fly in from far off places to teach our students. My most heartful thanks is for Mr. Tampa Tesring, who generously recommended His Holiness, the Lai Lama Ji, to visit our university. I am very thankful to him. It would not have been possible without you, sir. And now I take privilege to announce today the opening of Chitkara University Center for Happiness. This center will work to towards increasing quality of students' experience at Chitkara University by cultivating an environment that enables students to take charge of their learning and become lifelong learners and successful leaders. His Holiness has kindly consented to inaugurate the same after this function. His Holiness Dalai Lama Ji, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step, and we are committed to do our bit to contribute so that this world becomes a better place to live happily and peacefully. And we all know this is just a beginning. Thank you. And I think we all should stand up to say thanks to His Holiness.
I would request the delegates for the Global Week to please uh, follow the um, escorts and assemble at the pre-designated area for photo. Thank you. Dean and directors are also requested to please move out for the photograph. And students to be seated here only for next 10 minutes. Please, for next 10 minutes, students to be seated here only. 